Hi, this is David Hillier here and I'm going to carry on with my videos on factor models and today's video is about portfolios. So I will be extending the analysis that I've carried out so far in my videos to the portfolio level. So I follow a, a very similar type of pattern as I did for the previous uh, chapter which is related to CAPM. So if we start off, uh, and this is a bit of a, a review of what we've covered already, uh, we can see that a company uh, or a, a security, um, uh, the returns on that security consist of two components. One is what you expect is going to happen, and then the other is what you don't expect is going to happen. So you can, you can really dichotomize that into the expected return component and the unexpected return component. Now, the expected return component is what you think is going to happen, and so there's no real uncertainty there. Uh, but where the uncertainty is, is in the unexpected part. And uh, we can break that up into two components. One is the what we call the systematic risk component. Uh, that's the any new events or any unanticipated events that affect many securities. And then you have the unsystematic risk component where you have the new event or the new information affects only one individual uh, company. So it's only um, relevant to that particular company. And we call that, that's the, the E part here. Now we're then going to split up the, the systematic risk and say that the, the, the market-wide uh, effects of new information are driven by factors and those factors we can uh, there could be many factors but what we're going to do is we're just going to call them F uh, here and, re and we've got three factors in this example inflation factor the GNP growth factor and the interest rate factor now it's important to remember that at this point in time um, that any of these F's, these are the unexpected parts. So an F is the difference between the what happens and what you expect to happen. What you expect to happen is captured by that part. So it's like unanticipated changes from what you actually expect. So we can extend this to any number of factors and uh, we have just in this particular um, you know, specification we have K factors and uh, it's a general expression. So the return on any security is made up of the expected return plus a function of all those market-wide factors uh, that drive unexpected compo uh, parts of the return. And then you have the systematic part of that return. Now we're now going to start working in portfolios and uh, we're going to be working with this particular specification but at the portfolio level. So um, in the example I'm going to use, I'm going to use a one-factor model and an example of the one-factor model is the, the market model. Uh, so you can see that the return on security is equal to the expected return plus the one factor. In this case the factor is the market, the return on the market. And we're only looking at differences between what you expect uh, the return on the market being what it actually is, and then you have the unsystematic component. So that's a one-factor model. It just gives you a, a bit of an idea into the type of thing we're talking about. And so let's now look at this fairly busy slide, uh, but I'll take you through each component. So we start off with the first line, and we can say that just like the, the market model, um, the return on a security is equal to the return that you expect, that's that component, plus the the unanticipated part of the the factor um, that's if we look at this that's what we've got here it's, it's that component there plus the beta plus the unsystematic part of the return now you'll notice that there's no subscript here because it's one factor it affects every security so you've got basically just that that one part there now it's a portfolio so we're going to call each of the weights in the portfolio X and it's an N asset portfolio, so you'll have N weights. And those weights must add up to one. And so we can then say that, you know, in using the portfolio mathematics that we, we covered uh, in previous lectures, we can say that the return on a portfolio is a weighted average of the return 
of each of the individual assets that are in the portfolio. So you can see here uh, using the this particular equation that each of the weights uh, appear and remember these weights must add up to one uh, and then you have the return on each of the individual securities. We're now going to use the formula, the factor for, um, formula that we've got for in each individual securities and substitute that into each of the individual returns. So you can see here that the return in a portfolio is the weight of the first asset multiplied by the return in the first asset and we express the return in the first asset as a factor model which is the expected return in asset 1 plus beta 1 times the factor uh, the, the, the difference in what you expect, the unanticipated component in the factor, plus the unexpected firm specific return component. And we do that for each of the individual securities. Sorry, that shouldn't be an L there, that should be a, an uh, ellipsis. Uh, it's just me using a Mac that uh, causes sometimes this to appear. Now, so if you look at that then, what we're going to do is we're now going to dis break these up so that we're going to express each of the, the return components as the expected return component, the factor component, and the uh, unsystematic or the diversifiable uh, firm-specific uh, return component. And that's what we're doing here. So the return in a portfolio is consists of three distinct factors. The first one is the weighted average of the expected returns. So you can see here, it's just the expected returns on each of the assets in the portfolio, uh, and it's a weighted average. It's uh, the weighted average of the betas uh, in the portfolio multiplied by the factor, and plus the weighted average of the firm-specific components. Now, as we increase the number of assets in the portfolio, what happens is that this component, the third component, the firm specific component, tends to go to zero, because each of these uh, has each of the x's uh, is a weighting. These are firm specific, so in, uh, you might get some positive uh, information events for some companies. We get negative information events for some companies, but when we extend this into infinity, the positives will outweigh the negatives. And they're unanticipated information events, so there's no expectation that the the long, the you know, the very large scale average will be positive or negative. They basically will just cancel each other out. We can't expect anything, so the expected value of each of these um, epsilons will be equal to zero. So that disappears in a portfolio, in a, a large portfolio. So what you're left is just with the expected returns of the individual assets plus the factor multiplied by the expected returns of each of the individual betas of those assets. And those betas are with respect to that factor. So the, the firm-specific component disappears. And you might recall that from previous uh, lecture and video, uh, where I, I, I showed that for um, the portfolio theory. So it's the it's exact same you know approach that we're taking. And Using factor models, we're finding the exact same thing. So I'm going to give just an example to, to show you um, what, what I'm really talking about here. Now, it's a, a very s simplified example, but it does illustrate the how diversification uh, affects portfolios. So we're going to start off with saying that there are three components to the return of security. There's the expected return. There's the market-wide unanticipated return component and there's the firm-specific component. So we're going to have an N asset portfolio. So there will be N assets in that portfolio. We're assuming that every single asset will have an expected return component of 10%. We'll assume that every single asset will have a beta with respect to the factor of 1. And then we'll also assume that it's an equally weighted portfolio. So that means that the weights will be equal to 1 over n. Um, and so let's see what happens then to our um, portfolio. Then, Well, we, ev every asset uh, has an expected return component of 10%. Given it's equally weighted, the, it means that the expected return component on that portfolio is equal to 10%. The, we have a, a 
a beta of 1 for each of the assets. So if you've got an average, an equally weighted average of uh, betas of 1s uh, divided by the number is actually just equal to 1. So the, the beta component disappears and we're left just with the F. And then we have this last part where we have the, and that's the third part, that's the firm specific part, where we have the weights, uh, 1 over n, um, it's equally weighted, so that's why we get 1 over n multiplied by each of these epsilons. Now, if the expected value of these epsilons is equal to 0, because it's unanticipated, it doesn't affect anyone else, it only affects the individual company, then as we increase n, these disappear to 0. So you're left with that disappears, and then you're just left with the expected return component plus the weighted average of the, the betas multiplied by the factor. We can graphically show this, and you'll have seen this uh, graph before. Uh, this is the unsystematic part, and uh, as we increase n, this starts to go to zero. And so you're left just with the systematic part, and that's the 10% plus the f here. And so we, we've we shown this uh, before that um, as we increase the number of assets in the portfolio, the diversification effect results in the risk of that portfolio decreasing. But it doesn't decrease to zero because there's a systematic uh, wide uh, effect from events and so therefore you have systematic risk component. And the risk of a portfolio is uh, made up of the systematic risk, the, the, the market-wide risk effects, plus the unsystematic risk, which will disappear as we increase the size of the portfolio. So a very quick video uh, explaining portfolio theory, but using factor models uh, to come to the exact same conclusion as we did in a previous video. So thank you very much.